so we heard from four speakers, experts. In uh, session one, we heard from legends. And uh, the legend said that uh, they want the work to be carried, uh, continued by the next generations. And I think we were able to confirm that that was exactly what were, is happening from the speakers of the four experts presentation. With the uh, four speakers who are the speakers at the uh, six session two, and a, our executive director Imura as a moderator, we are to have a, a panel discussion. So I like to ask the panelists and the uh, moderator Imura to start panel discussion. Hi. Thank you very much. We'd like to now start the panel discussion. I am Imura, uh, Imura from Nedo. I'll be a moderator. I've been working on renewable energy and ammonia and uh, resource recycling. I'm an executive director of Nedo. So the uh, panelists are the four speakers who just gave us their talks from different areas of expertise, and I will not repeat their introduction. And at this panel discussion, we'd like to discuss topics relevant to different areas to further promote renewable energies and South will touch upon questions participants gave us in advance. And the uh, discussion point will be relevant to all different areas. Oh, I hope to be able to ask a uh, three questions to the speakers. So if you can respond to those questions in one minute, you'll be appreciated. So three questions. First question. So other than technology, what are the challenges? So we've been talking about uh, ch uh, technology. So I'd like to ask your view about the uh, challenges outside of technology. And you could make your comment uh, in response to the other speakers, a, a presentation as well. And also, second question is related to to uh, international context, like uh, how you consider the uh, supply chain, or how do you regard a uh, overseas market uh, or competition against overseas a company. And lastly, my last question is in relation to next fifty years. So I'd like to ask for your message to a uh, the younger people who are to uh, work in the future, and also your message to uh, government agencies or NEDO. So those are the three questions. So I like to ask a question. Uh, I, those questions I like to re hear response from the speakers, starting from Moita San. So what are the challenges other than technology challenges? And the keywords could be social acceptance, supply chain, or we talked about the uh, securing of fuel stock for itself, and also human resource uh, was also a keyword in relation to geothermal and the uh, waste recycle of the relevant equipment and the certification. Maybe they are the keywords that you can touch upon. And we recently talked about the perovskite parcel. What are the challenges other than technology? Well, thank you very much. Well, I was with um, Anedo, and I don't feel uh, technology was not inferior. We were 
lost in terms of the business. And in the end, the people were taken away from us along with the technologies. And this has to be avoided. So rule making is, of course, important. At the same time, quality and cost are two areas um, where we have to win simultaneously. Uh, to this end, at the very beginning, working with the government, when I talk to METI officials, sometimes uh, we never really talk about oh, there is no precedent. They say things like in China they would do this. So that's the starting point of our discussion. So from such a viewpoint, we are trying to preempt some challenges and making responses to those would be important. Let's turn to Okagaki-san, same question. Yes. I'd like to talk about the uh, offshore wind power, gen uh, wind power generation. So fixed bottom, bottom fixed projects. There are many of the uh, track record already, but there is a scale up risk, but in terms of technology, there's no a major uh, barrier. But when it comes to floating side, going forward, especially in Japan, there will be a uh, project in the sea area with the uh, significant depth. But the floating technology is still, we need a uh, demonstration and a verification in terms of technology that is see a large scale. And also we need to reduce costs to see a commercial feasibility. So for the floating side, we still have many uh, challenges that need to be overcome. It's uh, thank you very much. Next in regards to Jio Samo, Ariki san. Regards to Jio Samo, as I mentioned earlier, uh, social acceptance is important, including hot spring operators and those who focus on environment. We have to accumulate track record one by one tenaciously, and we have to alleviate concerns and address them. And also with the forestry agency and MOE deregulation, so that geothermal can and environment can coexist. We should have a discussion so, so that we can expand this uh, plant kind of uh, power generation. Thank you. Ishimasan, please. Yes, actually, I'm rather being repetitive, but the uh, momentum, momentum or the uh, raise of awareness is very important, specifically. For example, we're also giving importance to education. We visit primary school or the junior high school, high school. And when we meet with those young people, uh, in many cases, they get uh, interested and they actually uh, sometimes visit their municipality to ask why things are not happening in their area. So I think those efforts can lead to increased momentum. Uh, thank you very much on my side as well. When I go to Haneda, when I went on a business trip, there was this uh, green airplane which uses a staff. Uh, so B2B business is probably your mainstay, but I believe that there are some B2C touch points as well. And I believe to win understanding from the Japanese general public, I think it's quite important. It can be useful to create momentum. Next, when it comes to overseas uh, keyword, um, second question. So often, technology won a market loss, especially in regards to overseas market, especially China is a country which we always keep in mind, mass production leading to more share, more affordable prices in some areas. Once again, with the keyword of overseas, what are the challenges in supply chains, especially from the large overseas market? How is Japanese market perceived and what sort of efforts and initiatives are needed? One by one, please. The same order, Morita san. Thank you very much. Pair of Sky TV is a um, focus of China as well. So they cannot compete intentionally price-wise, but we are working with uh, METI. And first and foremost, uh, we are now making efforts. So it's not to the private sector, it's to uh, the government. So Perov Sky has been used for G7 Hiroshima Summit as well as COP28. But going forward, the government is quite serious about considering renewables. And there are areas where we can have potential collaborations, so we should have some footprint 
in those spaces. And after we have some operation in the country, and once we reach one gigawatt capacity, after 2030, once we reach that sort of a stage, then we have to go without subsidies. And at that timing, we should target overseas market and then work on the supply chains. Yeah. Thank you very much. So subsidy, with or without subsidy, the uh, speed for the market development uh, can uh, change. Uh, so you just show the determination that uh, he will be growing uh, without subsidy. Okay, Aksan, please. Yes. I'd like to also talk about the perspective of offshore wind power generation. So offshore wind power generation uh, is to grow to the uh, global scale market, starting from Europe, in Asia and North America, and also in Oceania, the market is spreading and growing. In this situation, Japan does have a uh, domestic big potential. So in Japan, we need to grow our market, grow industry, and then in future, we should grow this into a uh, export industry. Unfortunately, we don't have a uh, manufacturer for a uh, large turbine, but uh, we still have a uh, strong uh, technology capability in terms of the foundation. So we'd like to leverage that. Thank you very much. In your business, well, you talked about the uh, Europe. Uh, you also you talked about the collaboration with UK, but the uh, you, know, you also work in uh, Oceania. I, I'm, I assume that you are also uh, looking at the uh, Oceania or Asia, right? Well, it depends. But the South Asia, for example, in the southern part of Vietnam, they have a stable, strong wind. So. In future, I believe that kind of area is to grow into a major market. Thank you very much for that. Arikisan, please. I believe that there are some international aspects um, uh, to it. At the same time, it is an underground resource that you're talking about. So, given you have to consider a domestic geographical situation. So, yes, as you rightly pointed out, there is an underground and overground part to geothermal. And as for underground, Iceland and New Zealand are pioneer countries, so they have a deeper knowledge. And in regards to power plants that are overground, Professor Murahoka and I mentioned that Mitsubishi, Fuji, and Toshiba are the three companies that enjoy more than 60% share. But there is a flash methodology and a binary power generation methodology for geothermal, and if it's a binary, Overseas uh, players have more knowledge and experience, they have more momentum, so we are weaker in Japan. But then, supported by NEDO and through RD with IoT and carbon neutral green growth uh, strategy related package, there are some support measures that are available. So, going forward, we don't want to be defeated by overseas uh, players. And I believe the overground uh, companies are working very hard. Oh, I know. Thank you once again. So the uh, business above the ground and also the uh, underground, there are two folds, and uh, still above the ground, uh, there is a strong a competitiveness and potential going forward. Thank you very much. Now, with first to Seth Yishimura san could you give us your comment? Thank you. As I mentioned when I was using the slide earlier today. We're now working on the effort to uh, create a uh, recycle system being established in Japan. But of course, we have to uh, look at the uh, outside of Japan as well. And uh, when it comes to business, what is important is a person person relationship or network. And the uh, when we are to go abroad, we need to identify a uh, person who can work with. And uh, we have experience working in different companies, and we have uh, knowledge about the different culture and such, and that is know-how. And a, uh, we do have areas where we are a, a strong. Uh, we like to have a, a partnership leveraging such a, a strength, and I think that will be very important for making business feasible. So, so far, you've uh, done some overseas uh, businesses and you've uh, sort of established uh, routes or channels to go into those overseas markets. 
Well, thank you very much. Uh, so our time is really pressing. So I'd like to ask uh, the very uh, final question to all of you to expand uh, this new technology use uh, will be quite important. And do you have any uh, message for them? And also to NATO and the government, do you have any requests or a message to them one by one again, please? Morita-san, could you repeat your question? Well, for next generation, because we've looked back the past 50 years and now we have to think about the future. So any message yeah, for future generations so your stakeholders? In my division, last year there were 20 people, this year we have 50 people, so there is only one other person in their 50s apart from myself. And so, these are members of young ones are thinking that this is really for them themselves. So rather than from myself, I tend to ask a, a question to them rather than give a message to them. What is your vision in 20 years? What is your blueprint? And from our predecessors, we had some uh, talks and then I knew some aspects, so I share such information with them and I give them a thought-provoking question when they think about what Japan will be like in the future. If you think about such a question, naturally you can come up with an answer. So what about yourselves? What about your children? And you ask yourself such a questions, I believe that energy questions will solve themselves. So I'd like to work on it. Thank you very much for a very encouraging words. Okay, Aksan, please. Climate change issue is a global challenge, the biggest challenge in the history of humanity. This uh, flow toward decarbonization, there'll be no change to it. And given the situation, the young generation is very sensitive to uh, the issue, and uh, many people are interested in solving social issues. And uh, what I think is uh, that young people are actually ready to take actions without the need of the encouragement by the seniors. But uh, I think we can do our part to a fair environment for them. And also, without human resource development, unfortunately, the social implementation uh, cannot uh, succeed. And so, we have to consider human resource development issue as a uh, issue of the society as a whole. Thank you so much, Mr. Ariki. A message for the youth, maybe not necessarily that, as has been mentioned, the seventh energy basic plan uh, will be out, and I hope that there will be a higher ambition and aspiration. That's my first point. And the second point is that uh, geothermal doesn't enjoy high recognition, so I hope that we can get more supporters in the future. Finally, in geothermal, what's most moving is that when we can see the steam getting out of the ground and I hear this uh, large, loud noise and then I can feel the energy of the earth and the planet and then that is uh, the most rewarding moment for myself. So do please visit one of our plants and if you can get an inspiration and support us, that would be great. Yes, it would be good that there will be opportunity for young people to visit their plants. So I'd like to ask a last comment from Mr. Nishimura. Well, thank you very much. So we're working on staff project and it was just adopted as a project subsidized by NEDO as well. And there are many from NEDO among the participants today. And uh, we are working in unity and very much proud and appreciative of being able to do this. So I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you. And what we are now trying to do is quite different from before, because the uh, demonstration for supply chain is a uh, with a diverse elements. There are many unprecedented, and uh, we are trying to come up with solutions for those unprecedented challenges. Working together with uh, different stakeholders, uh, working with NEDO. So I'd like to see uh, the, uh, the similar efforts continued going forward. Thank you very much to the. 
speakers. We had only limited amount of uh, time, but we also talked about the uh, challenge outside of technology and also the international context and the message to the future generation. With this, we'd like to close the uh, panel discussion. Please give a uh, round of applause to the panelists. And I'd like to ask panelists to return to your seat. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Nato.